Welcome everybody to another episode of Photographer's Favorites. Today I have John Beck with me. Thanks so much for joining me, John. Oh, thank you for having me, Ray. Yeah, definitely. Hey, John, how long have you been doing bird and wildlife photography? A little over two years now. Um, okay. It's been something I've, I've kind of played with along the way, but seriously, for about two years. Nice, nice. Uh, was it birds from the beginning or was it... Uh, it it's always been birds. Um, I, okay. I am not a not a birder, but I love bird photography. So nice. What anything or, specific or you the, like about it, or? Well, yeah. So I love the areas that it takes me. Um, yeah. You know, living in the living in you know an urban area. I live in Philadelphia. It's difficult to find a lot of the larger animals. At, you know, close to home. <laughs> birds are in abundance here. We have a lot of great locations for them, and I have friends who are great birders. So it makes it very easy to. Go out That's and find good subjects. to have. Those are good friends. It is. It is. <laughs> they do all the legwork for you. You just go out and take the photos, right? <laughs> they do, but I think they're on to me now. You know, they're not yeah. quick to point out uh, point out different birds anyway. <laughs> no. Yeah, well, you're not giving anything back, John. You don't have you don't know right. how to find the birds. Come on. I, I, that's that's right. You, know, I, you I share the photos them with them, though, huh? I share the photos, but uh, I rely heavily on them for their their identification expertise. That's good. Well, and it's something honestly you'll pick up over time, and that, that's kind of whole, the whole process, right? I started the same I, way. I couldn't find a damn yeah. thing, and then you know over the years I kind of picked it up and and learned it. So I've gotten a little better, but I feel like I still have so far to go. Yeah, and it's hard unless you spend a ton of time out there. Really, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's very true. Just like anything else. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It really is no surprise. You know, um, the, the, uh, cliched saying practice makes perfect. Uh, it really does apply to so many things and photography, especially wildlife photography is certainly one of them. So, yeah, that's for sure. All right. So, um, yeah, we're gonna, no, oh, I, I kind of introduced the name of the show, but not what we're doing. So if anybody hasn't watched one of these yet, uh, basically John picked out five photos of other photographers that he really liked. I picked out five photos. We're going to go through them one at a time, say what we love about them, why we liked them, why we picked them, and um, just you know share other photographers' great photos. So uh, you might see some photographers here that you already don't follow. You may see some that you already follow. So hopefully in any case, you get to see some nice photos, enjoy our thoughts on them and uh maybe even pick up um a little something to learn out of it so with that you ready to get started john i'm ready all right let's do it we'll start with the first one you picked oh look at that man beautiful cedar waxwing I, one of my favorite looking birds hands down just so beautiful uh the first time i ever saw one i was like is that thing even real and i think it's it's a comment a lot of people say um uh, love the vibrant colors in the shot are really cool and super dramatic with the uh, the spotlight here, you know, uh, just kind of uh, nice strong sun coming in. But then we got the dark background, but then these pops of vivid colors coming in. You get the nice little uh, yellow tips on the tail there. And then, of course, that that smooth gradient and the beautiful, beautiful mask on these guys. It really is incredible how these things are colored. It, it is. And so. Um, and it, it's funny too. I really like this photo because it shows them in some, kind of some classic ways you see them, which is on berries, you know, which is what they love to eat in Absolutely. the winter. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, man. Great, great choice. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, th I saw this picture. I knew I had to select it when I was, when I was going through and collecting pictures for today. Uh, yeah. one of the things I love about this is, is the bird itself. It is my albatross. I have oh, yeah? been hunting and looking and searching. And um, I have friends hunting and looking and searching, and <laughs> yeah. I'm the guy who get who gets the phone call. Hey, they're over here, and I go yep. there, and they're gone. And uh, yeah. I have yet to see one in nature, so I, I love the subject. I am desperately trying to photograph my own. It everything you said uh, about this is exactly you know, what I would what I would comment on. the The contrast between the brilliant lighting on the bird, the the dark yep. background, the yep. pop of the berries down at the bottom. I I love it all. It's it's fantastic. And it is a, that classic pose, right? That striking kind of quarter away, quartering away from you, kind of glance, that one eyeball. Yeah, and we got good eye beautiful. contact there too, you know, yep. which, which helps. And it's and a know, little it's bit of catch light in the eye. Yep, 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 totally, yeah. Um, they're a species, I don't know why, I guess I've never really devoted effort to photographing them. Um, 
and so i don't have a ton of photos of them either but i have luckily you know had some time with it in uh in a few different scenarios i was actually yeah. running a, a loon workshop this past summer and the cabin we were staying at where i had everybody staying had a flock of wax wings that was coming into this the <laughs> property on the yard on the grass eating wild strawberries off the ground and it was hilarious because at first that's crazy yeah at first we had no idea what they were eating and we had a few photos and we were looking at them and we're like what is this like what's on the ground we couldn't figure out if it was like grubs or some funky insect and so it was a little freaked out that we were like what are we laying in here you know <laughs> and then we actually after the flock flew away one time we walked over and looked and I was like, Oh, there are these tiny little strawberries. And we're like, Oh, whew, thank God. We're not going to be getting attacked by some freaky insect. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm like you, I've dedicated a ton of time and I've just never been able to find them. So I yeah, think they you, can be uh, tough. you talk me into coming to your new workshop next year. Yes. Yeah. Well, you're gonna have to sign up for the new year after it's, it's all sold out right now. <laughs> it's all full, right? <laughs> Story all right. You ready for the next one? <laughs> I am. All right. Here you go. Wow. Wow, what an incredible photo. Um, I, so I've been seeing so many images, a lot coming from you, maybe some other photographers, where the, the, the silhouette is becoming, I don't know if it's becoming more popular, or maybe it's always been popular and I just haven't seen a lot of it. Um, but I love, the, I love the bright background. I love the backlighting coming through, being able to get a little bit of, um, you know, just the, the silhouette, it's almost ethereal in a way. Yeah. Uh, it's it you know it kind of reminds me of where we are in the season two so we're in we're in the fall there's a little bit of that orange glow coming off the back yeah um, beautiful yeah and it's funny too it is really good call in the fall i wouldn't have picked that up but it uh i guess in my mind i'm like i, I would never know what season it is but you nailed it you actually wrote here 10 20 so oh, I did. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so everything you said just perfectly lined up right there yeah um but yeah, it's and it's really cool that it's a warbler species. He said, uh, David said it's a uh, a pine warbler here, and so um, yeah, a great photographer, real creative. I've I've had the pleasure of working with him uh, a few times. I'm sorry, its name is Larry, not David. Uh, and the ethereal look, I think I totally agree with you. It really comes from either it's either a foreground or background element i can't tell what here but just that little bit of blur whatever he's shooting through or is in the background there but it's not affecting the bird at all and um i'm guessing this is the sun directly behind it uh, he doesn't say right in the caption there but it kind of has that look and if it's not then whatever the light is is just gorgeous you know gorgeous uh, yeah, yeah, so and it's it, it's so inspirational to be able to see people doing something different than the than the standard just brightly lit full of, like what I would do, right? So where yeah. I am, um, I'm you know I do a lot of work just to get the image of the bird, and sure, I'm yeah. still kind of working to be able to mature myself to get beyond the the basic um, you know documentary type photo of, yeah, yeah, of yeah. the bird, and being able to see you know knowing that there are things that you can do with slightly different conditions, slightly different light. Um, yeah, I love, love seeing pictures like this. Yeah. And this one, the last thing I want to point out about this shot from Larry, the, um, the thought that goes into this shot, right? The placement of this bird is perfect in that circle. You know, it's not off to one side. Is. The beak isn't <laughs> coming out. It's not touching the side of the head, right? It's like perfectly placed in there. And that just shows the obvious thought that goes into a shot like that when he is composing it. And, uh, I think that's just always such a, a, a nice touch to see with photographs though. And it is almost the, along the rule of thirds too, right? So it, you know, yeah. the birds kind of, that does have that uh, the space off to the right. Um, totally. That kind of kind of leads you into the picture a little bit. Yeah. And then bonus singing too with the beak open. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next shot. All right. Oh man, Ron, he's <laughs> always uh, doing great with these grouse out there. I got to get out there with him one of these times too. He keeps inviting me. He's like, "You got to yeah. come out, dude. You'll love these grouse." Uh, but yeah, um, gorgeous light. Love seeing it on. It looks like snow. Um, the uh, the symmetry of the tail feathers like that when it's displaying like that. Uh, nice low perspective. Just yeah, everything. Everything so clean. And um, bonus for color matching, Ron, with the background yellow tone <laughs> being almost an exact match for the colors in the breast of the bird there when it's displaying like that. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how he uh, I, pulled that one off, but uh, very, very well got, done. So yep. yeah, just 
it's so cool that to me, like the color palette of the bird, kind of the, the white and the yellow and a little bit of the brown match the background, right? And so tonally, the entire photo just works together on top of just great pose, really nice soft light, good perspective, all that stuff. Absolutely. So uh, for me, uh, and, and this is the same with a lot of the pictures that I chose, this, the species really means, is what, what really attracts me to a lot of these photos. I know how hard it is to, to get close to these kind of birds. I love the area that they're found in, um, specifically with with Ron listening to uh, listening to his podcast and some of the yeah. stories that he's told about the work and the effort that go into being able to photograph these birds and how right. easy it is to scare them off. And if you scare them off, you may be done for the day. Um, yeah, just knowing that it makes it that much more meaningful to me. Um, and it's a gorgeous bird. It, it, it's just Isn't it? they're incredible, incredible looking birds. Like you said, the the symmetry with the um, with the ornamental tail feathers and how they are kind of perfectly arranged around the back. They're all, they're all in good condition. So they haven't been, been damaged or, you know, yeah. predators haven't gotten to them. Um, it, it's gorgeous. Those birds are beautiful and, and it's great. It's a great shot. Yeah. And you're right. Uh, not knowing those stories behind the photo can um, take away from it a little bit, you know? Uh, well, I guess it probably doesn't really take away from it. Doesn't, it doesn't but take away, but it adds, adds to it when it. you do know it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. That's that's more the way it works for sure. Uh, yeah, so that's great. Nice one. All right, here we go. Speaking of keeping with the silhouette theme. <laughs> <laughs> so so very very cool. Um, again, I love the I love the colors. I love the the kind of brownish orange that's coming out in the background. The silhouettes yeah. are awesome. Uh, the two birds kind of coming into each other to to meet in the middle is, is very cool. Um, I like the gesture of the one with the, you know, with the leg up, it looks like yeah. it's maybe approaching or moving, moving forward a little bit to it. Um, does it say what kind of birds these are? Um, or, I or no? don't it's, see it there. Really it uh, they but... look like rail chicks of some sort. Uh, so okay. that's my guess. Um, I forget where this photographer is located. Uh, I think it's in Europe somewhere, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but I, I could be easily be mistaken. But um, just based on the shape and the feet, uh, they definitely are young birds. They're chicks, and uh, it looks like a rail species you to me. You can kind of see some of that with the feathers, kind of just yep. not really. They're kind of puffy. They haven't really yep. formed. Yep, anything. exactly. Yeah, those downy feathers. <laughs> anything, yeah. Yeah, but, um, yep. And almost that, that prehistoric foot and the really long nails. Oh, totally. Coming off it, yeah, yeah, very yeah. cool looking. Yeah. Have you ever seen or photographed any rails? I have not. So um, I have not. Probably the closest that I would come would be woodcock. Um, okay. Yeah, and uh, not really, not really a rail species, but but similar. Um, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. They're like oddball shorebird very, kind of thing. Yeah, uh, oddball shorebird. Um, yeah, odd, oddly shaped. They woodcock yeah, are neat genetically. You know, they their ears yes. are below their eyeballs or <laughs> kind of neat. But um, yeah, they're really, really neat. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, I just asked because you said prehistoric look, and that is the first thing that comes to my mind. Anytime I'm watching some rails, you know, I've watched clapper rails walking around. I'm like, these things just straight up look like dinosaurs, man. They look so prehistoric watching them. So uh, it's really cool that that kind of came across in the photo for a species totally you've did. never worked with. And you kind of pointed that out, you know, so uh, just a great nod to the photo that it kind of belays that information to somebody that has never experienced that bird. So that's, you know, that's awesome to see. Yeah. And I fully agree with everything you said. The foot up pose there makes a big <laughs> difference there. Um, the way they're almost touching. I also actually do like how the one is slightly out of focus and behind. So it just gives a little depth to the photo. Right. So they're not mm -hmm. all totally on the same plane. I mean, I think it would work either way, uh, but I do actually, in this case, like how they're doing that. And the fact that they're not intersecting because because it's a silhouette as soon as those two shapes actually intersect we lose the individual shape they just kind of meld into one shape you know and right. so having just that little tiny bit of separation there uh i think just gives it a little edge in how it looks and then the color in the background is just go uh, gorgeous so love it beautiful all right moving right along all right Oh man, Dan the Ripper, Andreas, <laughs> never missing. Look at that hawk owl coming right at you. Uh, right at I mean, you. What more do you say about that? You know, perfect eye contact, flying straight at you, head on shot, crazy sharp. Uh, he is so good at that stuff. Um, and I really like, I do like the high key ish look on this. You know, it's not a totally blown out background, but mostly white, right? So pretty just close. absolutely nothing distracting. And 
I see so many photographers and I did it myself, especially when I was a beginner, kind of shy away from like a white background, especially on overcast days. It's like, oh, I don't want it to look gray. And, and you know, I've seen people maybe even try to shift the, the white balance. So the sky, like a gray sky turns blue and then the photo just never looks right. Cause it's like, why do you have a blue sky, but a cloudy day, you know? Um, right. And, right. and so I think embracing, just embrace the overcast, embrace the white, let it go white. It's not distracting. It's a clean look. And, uh, yeah, I think it really works. And man, the symmetry on the shot is like incredible. That's what spoke out to me was the symmetry. Um, I am drawn right into those eyes. Like they're yeah. just, they, they capture me. Um, I didn't even notice the background, frankly, when I <laughs> yeah. just, just so yeah, because it's not eye. distracting. Um, There's nothing pulling your eye back there, which is perfect. Yeah. Uh, you know, the symmetry of the wings are perfect. Uh, yeah. the positioning of the beak, like he's, he's coming dead on. He's not, yeah. not off to a side. Uh, and so much detail just incredible yeah. detail yeah. Um, yeah. and and then the ripper has so many fantastic owl shots this one just jumped out it's ridiculous yeah even even yeah he... <laughs> yeah i mean you I, could just I basically to... close your eyes scroll through instagram and point and then come up with a great shot of an owl so yeah I, I, absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, and uh, a blast talking to Andreas. He was like one of the first few guests on the Wildlife Photo Chat uh, podcast. So. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So if you didn't listen yeah, you, to that, yeah, definitely check it out. I think he's like episode two, maybe two or three, something like that. Well, you you, you do such a great job putting out content that I am having such a hard time going backwards because I have to say, <laughs> <It's a constant. laughs> you know, one of the uh, probably one of the only downsides for me about working from home is not having the commute time to listen to the podcast anymore. Yeah. Right. No, no drive time. Yeah. 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 That's gotcha. right. That's, That's right. funny. <laughs> All right. Moving right along. Wow. Okay. Another beautiful Heron. Yeah. So I, I kind of love the, I love the, uh, the way that the, the screen is almost, or the, the image is almost split. You have that, that yep. foggy green, um, kind of missed on the on my left hand side it goes very clear and and dark on the on the right hand side so you can yeah. you could really make out the details of the bird um i also love that it's not it, it's not zoomed in on the bird um yep you know so i have a tendency to do it i see so many other pictures where we we crop in tight on the bird and try sure. to get as much detail out and we miss all that beautiful background yeah gorgeous yeah, and actually, it's funny. I didn't even realize this because I didn't really set it up this way. But uh, so this is John Flagg, and the previous episode of this uh, photographer's favorite show was him as a guest. So <laughs> yeah, I just now realized. I'm like, oh wait, I just recorded it with John. Yeah. So um, anyway, yeah, if you missed that episode, go check it out, or you go check may it have out, just yeah. come out before we got to this one. But yeah, the uh, the backlight on this too, that rim light around the great blue heron just incredible and like you said the fact that he left the foreground green in there to kind of help separate the photo and maybe even balance it out a little bit more is really nice so it was a it was a good call and probably not an easy one so and i, I kind of picture the heron kind of being led into the light like it, it's it's moving towards the light yeah 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 yep um, yep yeah. yeah and the edit on this is really nice there's the d super dark dramatic background there uh, but yet we still get to see what the species is, right? So it's not just an outline of light. We still have plenty of detail on the bird. So yeah, it's, I just, I love that style of lighting, man. When it's well, when it's shot well, I can never pass on it. <laughs> it's beautiful. All right. Let's see what we got next. Oh, nice. More grouse. Nice. <laughs> Different one though. This is a rough grouse, right? Yeah. Yeah. Rough that grouse. is a rough nice. grouse. Yes. That is uh, a rough grouse. Again with the backlight, right? So I didn't pick this one. You chose this one, but. I did. Uh, great use of backlight, the way the sun's glowing in through the wings there like that. And uh, a species I've seen but never got to see um, doing the courtship display like this, the drumming, which is really cool. And also a species I don't have any good photos of. But, uh, yeah, uh, the light on this one is what really makes it for me. How about you? Uh, for, me as, for me as well. Uh, J Jim is actually a friend. Uh, J Jim I know through the – dog training and bird hunting world um okay i, I came, came to him as a photographer after i'd known him for a while as okay uh, somebody who i have uh, uh communicated with as far as bird hunting and dog training goes uh he's up in alaska he's a retired state trooper for alaska uh, oh wow he has such amazing 
photographs of, of interior Alaska and he has a ton of grass photos which I find yeah. amazing because every time I go looking for grass they're, they're they rank next to pseudo wax ones for me as far as, <laughs> uh, as far as being able to find them yeah um, but the same same thing with the backlight coming through the the glow through the the translucency of the of the the flight feathers on the wings yep um just just gorgeous and I love you know seeing the background um knowing like you get a little bit of a an idea of the type of environment that they're found in that thick, thick undercover, yeah, dense forest, and, and yep. the, you know, the dense forest or the edge of the dense forest. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The edge yeah. being the case. And then a little touch of snow just to give you some seasonal, um, indication some seasonality. Nice. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Excellent. All right. Okay. Moving right along. Wow. So the rain speed jumps out to me right away. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right away on this. Um, well, what, what, cool colors on that bird um yeah the, the blue and the green and the the kind of model background that you see you see there are very very cool and i just being able to catch the raindrops coming down too i think is is great um so yeah, much detail and they, yeah she really did um the, the foreground uh yeah, having to have a little bit of the grass in the foreground be still in focus uh, very cool yeah she has a whole series of this heron this uh tricolored heron in the rain and it's funny i think this is one of the first ones she posted <laughs> she's like how do you protect your gear in the rain i got poured on and wasn't prepared <laughs> uh, but so kudos to emily for sticking it out you know uh, so many people Absolutely. the rain just is an indication and they're packing up and leaving <clears throat> um and this is a great a perfect example of the kinds of dramatic and unique shots that can be had in you know what most would say inclement weather because uh but most people kind of pack it up and leave, you know, and yeah, totally agree with every everything you said. The color palette is working well there. We actually, if we kind of break it down, right, we got the the primary colors. We got the red, green, and blue all working together here. Um, compositionally excellent. Uh, some space in front of the bird. Great low perspective, so she's eye level with it. So we got that nice isolation foreground and background, and then yeah, choosing the slower shutter speed. Uh, I don't know if she said the shutter speed here, but it was definitely slower, you know, probably 200th of a second or even let probably like down in the 60th of a second range to get those long streaks like that, you know, because yep. um, if you're up at 500th of a second or more, you're just going to have frozen raindrops kind of in there, a real tiny streak. So uh, a really nice artistic choice there uh, to kind of draw out those raindrops and make them a little bit of a softer element versus just a hard frozen in the air drop. It's great. All right. Yeah. Let's keep it going. Oh, sweet. Who can pass a good wood duck? <laughs> Man, the colors and texture in this one are outstanding. Uh, love the little splashes of bokeh here, but then you also get this great patterning of the, the soft rippling water. It's reflected in the back there. Um, the green leaves dropping in, framing it in nicely. Again, with the backlight, right? The sun doesn't look like it's directly hitting the bird, except for maybe right there, just like one little spot. Uh, but the sun is definitely coming in from behind um, to kind of, it looks like it's glowing off of some background there. Uh, or maybe it's not coming in from behind, actually. It, maybe it's just coming in from the side, hitting the background. I don't know. But, I, I uh, think it looks the, like the, it's coming in from the side a little bit. Um, yeah. I was stopped in my tracks when I was scrolling through and I saw this photo. Uh, yeah. I love the species. Um, you know, wood ducks are, are, are one that I fortunately get to photograph a lot of in the Philadelphia area. If I'm on nice. Park, it's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. for yeah, of yeah. course, you know, you're not far. Um, it, it, it's beautiful, but uh, you can get a lot of wood duck photos. To have a great wood duck photo is really hard. Um, yeah. This one is, there's such a blend of, there's such a softness to it. The colors are fantastic. I love the reflection, both with the duck itself, but also with the leaves on the on the top and bottom kind of pointing yeah. you towards the bird. Totally. Coming in from from both sections and the little droplets of water as they come up there, it just really adds to it. It's such it a gorgeous image. Yeah. And again, jumping back to something you mentioned earlier, leaving a little space in the photo, right? All these elements are really good in this photo. They add to the photo. They don't distract. They don't take away. Um, obviously the bird is still the star of the show here. It's not like it's getting lost in the background or anything like that. Not so leaving all. a little bit smaller, going with more of a vertical composition to include more of that interesting foreground, background pattern, reflection, all that stuff, all a good thing that the photographer chose to do on this particular photo. So, yeah, well done. Well shot, well Beautiful. composed, well edited. 
well everything <laughs> <laughs> well, all right last shot off no bird <laughs> wow. okay a praying mantis very very cool so again with the silhouettes um yep. but 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 different right so now you're you're really in you're you're, you're in very close you're in probably very low on this um yeah. The the praying mantis, you know, so upside down, very cool, right? It's different yeah. than you would you would normally expect to see, but also centered in the circle, yep, uh, almost perfectly. Um, wow, yeah, this guy, all his macro stuff. If you're not following him, Sebastian, he is just yeah. ridiculous with the macro. Everything is just mind blowing. Beautiful colors. Uh, what always stands out to me is the patterning of both the bokeh that he uses, but also the um the plants in the photo you know in mm -hmm. with his insects just always such a great use of the patterning the really intricate like interesting looking plants here with these spiky things you know he's got the out of focus one there the out of focus ones here there's actually Down some there. lines he's probably shooting through or reflected in the bokeh itself back there so you got those shadow lines going through that and then yeah the placement of the praying mantis and a little bit kind of throwing you off from normal composition so a great use of the rule of thirds putting it on the right third but mm -hmm. you know the head is facing out to the right here so normally i would always kind of expect and anticipate to have more space in the direction of the head right um yep. not that we kind can see the eyes the and see which way they're looking but um i it still totally works um i think it it maybe introduces like a little bit of tension into the composition, but in a good way. And it's so well balanced with the other pieces of the little plants here, you know? Uh, and so it doesn't feel like if it was just empty over here, just this one, imagine that, right? Let's get rid of all the other extra plants here and just imagine the plant, the praying mantis and that ball of light composed this way. It would feel off. It would feel yeah, so say, heavy of, to the right. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but because of what everything else is included here, it feels just right to me. So um, just such an interesting composition and something that's no surprise coming from him. He does it all the time. And I love what you said about the patterns of the plant. Um, in addition to this, the almost symmetrical pattern of them, but the, the, there's something about the frailty of that one little blade that yeah. the, the, the praying mantis is hanging on to. Right. Uh, and, and that it's, it, you know, it, it's, it's very thin, it's very frail, but it's holding. Um, exactly. That, yeah. It, <laughs> it's not bent, describe, right? Yeah. It's, it's not bent, right? But it, it's it's there, and it, it's very cool. Yeah, you can imagine one of those things would probably be like annoyingly pointy if you touch them. You know, like <laughs> like totally <laughs> sticky, right. kind of like painful kind of thing. You know. That's yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, uh, I just always love his photography. So I was thrilled when he said we could use one. So, John, we did it. We made it through a set of ten. We did it. Yeah, Thank nicely you so done, much, man. Great photos. Yeah, you picked out some great ones, man. Thank you so much for joining oh, thanks, me. As you do. Yeah. Thank you yeah, for having me. I really me. appreciate it. Um, best place to follow you right here on Instagram, right? That's it, right here on Instagram. All right, John Beck Photography. Check yeah. him out. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Please check out all the other photographers we went over here. Uh, the links to them are in the YouTube video or just go to Wildlife Photo Chat. Check the episode there. You actually see every photo we talked about embedded right on the page for this episode. So you can watch it there and click right over to the photographers. So that's a nice, easy way to check them out and follow them. Um, don't forget the actual audio wildlife photography podcast. Don't forget my website, rayhennessy.com. I got a ton of stuff there, new photos every day, videos coming out all the time. Like John mentioned, he can't even keep up. So that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, so I'm always trying to put new stuff out. And uh, yeah, please spread the word about this. I'm getting some great feedback. People are really liking this idea of us sharing other photos and kind of diving into them a little bit more than just the generic great shot comment that you get on Instagram all the time. So John, again, thank you so much. And uh, I hope everybody has a great day and thanks for watching.